What's up guys, Speed here, and today I'm going to be giving you one underrated hero for each role in this current patch. It's been a while since I did one of these videos, and the reason why I want to talk about it is I've been following a lot of the pro scene. Even though there hasn't been too many games, there's been like series here and there, like even weird tournaments. I think there was some Russian tournament recently. I just watched a game where Aster played against Boom. So yeah, there's been games here and there. It's really sparked my interest in what the pros are picking right now. And so yeah, I'm here today to bring you one hero for each role. I'm really excited to do this. And yeah, let's get into it. Also, if you enjoy these type of videos, please like it. And yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Just please click the like button. It really helps me more than you'd think. Like honestly, it really, really does. So <laughs> now let's get into the video. I also just played a Snapfire game very recently where I outfarmed my mid lane puck. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because over on the main Game Leap website, I analyzed that game, posted it over there. So if you're interested in seeing how to outfarm your mid laner, right, as Snapfire, who I still, even after the nerfs, think is one of the best supports in Dota, go check it out. Click the link down below. Let's get it. So I'm going to start off with the safe lane. And I know this is already hypocritical because I said this is one underrated hero for each role, but I actually have two. I'm not going to cover one of them in depth. I'm just going to say why I think it's good. And then I'll move on to the, the main one. So the first hero that's kind of an honorable mention is Meepo. And I believe that this hero is a good safe laner, like quite strong. I believe that Meepo is underutilized as a safe laner. And it might sound weird because it's like, okay, well, you need a lot of levels. And then there's not that many camps that are as convenient to farm, right? Which is one of the big advantages of mid Meepo. And I'm not denying that. However, Meepo is a really good laner from my experience, especially if you pair him with something like, let's say a Dazzle, right? You have this insane level three spike where you just have two Meepos because at level three, you get two Meepos. Also, you have like seven armor. I think you have high HP regen. And yeah, you get two Meepos at level three, and then you have a point and poof, two nets, and you can secure kills on the majority of heroes. I really think this hero is underrated as a safe laner. I'm curious to see like if it's ever picked quite a bit more, but yeah, it was picked at TI. It was the one game where Liquid took a game off of OG in TI9. So yeah, I think the hero has viability and it's underrated a little bit. But now it's getting to the actual hero that I would like to talk about here today. We have Troll Warlord. Now what sparked my interest about Troll Warlord was this recent series that I was talking about where Boom played Aster. And what I like about Troll Warlord right now, besides obviously the Diffusal Blade build, which was technically nerfed recently, but is still relatively strong, is just his ability to be a strong laner. I still think that people don't realize that Troll is one of the best laners in Dota, as long as you cast his slow a lot and synergize with your supports. Troll is one of those heroes where, because he makes it almost impossible to trade, like you can't close the gap on him because he slows you. And then if you do manage to close the gap, you just miss like 50% of your auto attacks. It really makes this awkward situation for the majority of lanes where if the support is synergizing with the troll, they will get out traded nine times out of 10. And I just think that's really powerful. On top of that, if you are playing in a team or with friends, Troll Warlord is a fantastic flex pick. What do I mean by this? He can also play mid. Troll can play mid because he can actually be played as somewhat of a roamer. He's very strong with levels in the early game, and you'd be surprised. It's something that I played quite a bit in my recent solo queue ventures when I was going through them. I liked Troll Warlord mid, and so yeah, I think this hero is underrated at a 52.4% win rate according to strats.com. <laughs> and no, I'm not sponsored, I just felt like saying. Now let's get into the mid roll, and this is actually for me the hero that I'm most excited to talk about. I don't believe it's that underrated anymore for pros. I think this hero is becoming more and more popular, and I think it's going to continue to get more popular because of its ability to hit a spike. This hero has the hardest spike in Dota right now. What do I mean by that? Medusa, which is the hero I'm talking about, when she gets a rapier, hits this insane power spike that it is so hard to deal with because there was a lot of heroes buying evasion, you buy halberds, you buy butterflies, and you just dodge a lot of attacks. There's even quite a bit of evasion talents out there, right? But when you get this rapier, you can't miss, and you also do 300 damage in an AoE. More, obviously. It's crazy. It's so strong. And you can buy this rapier after one item, if it's good. And that's the cool thing about Medusa right now. You have the option, you have the option to buy this rapier at different points in the game. You don't even have to, you don't even have to. But I was watching a pro game where Medusa was picked and they bought the rapier after a Hurricane Pike and a Manta. Then in a different game, I believe it was Miracle. He bought it right after the Manta. Then in another game, they went Manta Butterfly Rapier. And that's the really cool part about Medusa. If you spam this hero and begin to digest and fully understand her kit, right, you can be very versatile in when you come online. You could come online early into the game by even buying some more smaller items and you fight fairly well. And then you can end the game at 20 minutes if you think it's 
necessary for your team by buying this really random rapier that most euros just can't do. And the strategy here, to make it clear, because I hear a lot of people complaining, Speed, you're advocating for people to buy rapier or medusa at 20 minutes in pubs. That's a disaster. To be clear, what you need to do when you get this item is exactly what I'm about to tell you. You have to Roche. In fact, you should try to Roche before you get the rapier. Realistically. Roche, Roche, Roche. You want rapier and Aegis together. That is the major spike. That is the major spike. In fact, if you don't have the Aegis, you basically want to be farming. Like, let's say you lose your Aegis and you were able to disengage. Just wait for the next one to, to look for another fight. I'm not kidding. And finally, the coolest thing about this new Medusa, and the reason why I'm calling it new is because it hasn't been picked too much lately, but there hasn't been any insane changes super recently. But her ultimate just makes her a race car. Like, th this current stone gaze is insane. It gives Medusa a 50% speed boost. Medusa actually is Tokyo Drift. Like, you go so fast. I've watched it in all these pro games, and when she clicks stone gaze, I'm actually shocked. How fast do you go? And then, at the same time, for 5 seconds, 6 seconds at max, it is almost impossible for the enemy team to fight you. Because they get slowed, and then if they get stoned, it's for 3 seconds, and they take 50% more physical damage when it's maxed out. 40% at level 1. It's crazy. I really think Stone Gaze has been buffed quite a bit, to the point where it's actually a, a very strong spell right now. Um, and so yeah, I, I really recommend trying this hero out. I think it's very underrated, especially in the mid lane where it's hard to get ganked. And yeah, good luck. Now let's talk about the position 3 roll, the offlane roll. And I want to go a bit back to a throwback hero. And the reason it came to mind, I was looking at win rates, and I was just thinking like, hmm, what is a hero I should play, or what do I want to try today? And Abaddon came into mind. In fact, according to what I'm looking at, he has a 53% win rate. Well, even 53.4, which is very high. It's the 10th highest currently. And for me, it just always makes me think, because I really like to try to think about why certain heroes will just randomly disappear, even if they're doing fine. And often, what I notice is that a hero will get nerfed, and even if they are still good or still better than the other heroes in Dota, they won't get played as much, or they won't get picked much at all. Strictly because they're not considered to be very good, because they got nerfed. It's almost like people get scared of nerfed heroes. It's like, oh, you know, this hero, uh, it got nerfed, it must be terrible. It's like the recent Timbersaw nerf, right? Timbersaw is, is considered to be a very strong hero right now by a lot of the pros, and it got this like 0.1 less armor at all levels on reactive and it's like you can look at that and be like oh gg guess like timber sucks no come on like this hero's still good and i think that's the same thing for abaddon his numbers got nerfed quite a bit and most notably he can't deny himself with his q which kind of phased him out as a support i don't recommend him as a support nearly as much as i do as an offlaner but for offlane abba a lot of the time you didn't even take your q it just goes to say like this hero is still a quite strong lane dominator when paired with the right heroes such as skyrath grimstroke even uh snapfire Abaddon Snapfire is ridiculous in lane. And on top of that, you're just this great pipe carrier. And if you guys have been paying attention to my videos, I've been stressing how important it is to be buying things like the pipe right now. I just think this item is kind of broken. Now let's move on to the position four role. And this is another high win rate hero. And yeah, I just, I think for good reason. Like I don't always look at the win rates and I'm like, oh, this is, this is why they're underrated. Uh, this is just another hero that I'm seeing the pros picking, which is why I think it's underrated in pubs. It only has a 5.9% pick rate, which isn't, that high, right, compared to a hero like PL who has 11%, right, so Nyx is, you know, it's not picked an insane amount, but it has a 52% win rate at the moment, and most importantly, even after its nerfs, it still can buy a Meteor Hammer and try to chain stun people. It's really strong. It's really, really strong, and I even talked about this hero fairly recently. I do remember talking about it, just kind of stressing how good I think it is, and I wanted to say it again today, because I still am very confident that Nyx is a very, very good hero. It directly counters so many heroes in Dota, like, if you play OD against Nyx or Snapfire against Nyx, it just feels terrible. It feels terrible. And a lot of heroes are like this, Ember, you know, Storm, it feels terrible to play against Nyx. And even let's say you aren't playing against these heroes in your Nyx, it's fine. You have a lot of options. Think about it. In the laning stage, what can you do? Well, you, you can do two things. You could just be a bodyguard for the majority of offlaners and trade with the position five because you have, you know, this insane regen as well as the melee proccing block. Or you can drag the wave, and no position 5 can essentially stop you from that, besides like Bane sleep. They can't do anything about it. So even if, let's say you're laning with a, with a Pudge, and you feel like you can't do anything, just drag some waves and get some levels. It's very, very effective, it's easy to execute, and you just have to have the idea in your mind. And finally, what I'd like to say about Nyx is that this pure vendetta thing, it still continues to shock me. I said it the last time I talked about Nyx, I'm gonna say it again. Nyx Assassin's pure vendetta 
just shocks me because in the past, if a hero had pipe or just natural high resistance for whatever reason, or was even getting affected by a pipe aura, it's like your vendetta would do so little damage, almost nothing if they were <laughs> in certain situations. Like it was kind of sad. It was really sad. Now, now, like this hero at level one, right? Vendetta, it has a 250 damage nuke. It also breaks by the way. So it's just like counter specific heroes that you wouldn't expect. And at max, it does 500 pure damage. For the majority of heroes, that's like a fourth of their HP pool. It's pretty insane. I mean, that's not considering the fact that with your other two spells, right, your, your mana burn and your stun, you're gonna do like a thousand damage realistically to the majority of heroes. That's crazy. Considering you also have Spike Carapace and a stun and you're probably gonna have a Meteor Hammer. Your potential impact on this hero is so high. And finally, this is a hero that is near and dear to my heart. It's probably my favorite position five to play of all time. Even mid lane, I love playing this hero and that's Dazzle. And the reason why I love Dazzle, even if it's not actually one of my most played heroes, I think I've played Wyvern and Prophet quite a bit more than, than Dazzle when it comes to the five roll. But the reason why I love Dazzle is if you understand how to play around his level two spike and even his level three spike with poison touch and heal, you can zone anybody out. I have crushed endless matchups with Dazzle and it feels great. It really, really does. And that's why I just, I'm a bit surprised when I see this hero never getting picked. I think it's quite good in pubs, especially if you make sure that your position four is a hero like Clockwork or, you know, Pango that can keep the stuns going and play the high tempo that Dazzle actually can, but just without stuns, you have this really nice combo. On top of that, I see heroes like Slaughter and all that comes to mind is like, if you throw a Dazzle on top of there and you have the bad Juju armor reduction going with, you know, the Corrosive Haze, heroes melt. Heroes melt. Pair that together with a, an SF, that sounds great to me. SF, Slaughter, Dazzle, like, that sounds like a very well-rounded team comp that can easily Roche. It can play pretty high tempo if it needs to, it scales fine. Throw, like, like tack on, let's say, a Troll Warlord with Dazzle in lane. Or a Meepo, that I said earlier. Like, Meepo, Dazzle, that sounds very strong. You have the, the heal bomb with the level 3 spike. This double level 3 spike. Or Troll Warlord? Troll Warlord Dazzle is nasty because you sustain the troll. And then on top of that, troll is very good at getting a ton of right clicks off and staying on top of people. Naturally, he has a root and a slow. So when you, when you pair that with Poison Touch, you're going to keep the Poison Touch going for a long time. I really just feel like this hero is somewhat underrated, especially even now that I'm really thinking about it. I, I really like this idea of Troll Dazzle. Uh, really good in lane. You're gonna allow him to get his ulti off in every single fight, as long as, you know, you can get Grave off. And it's a ton of physical armor reduction for the hero. So uh, Dazzle for me is someone I would like to see experimented more with. And as long as, you know, the Poison Touch can't get purged directly in the lane, you generally can have a ton of impact. Even if it can, realistically, Poison Touch is such a strong ability at level one. Like just at level one, it pushes the lane exceedingly hard, which is quite good in this trading meta when you don't need to necessarily keep the lane back. And if you catch people off guard and they're sitting in the creep wave, they just get like chunked for a third of their HP in the early game. It's really absurd. And that's why, yeah, I just want to talk about Dazzle, mention him within this video because my boy, I feel like he's been getting kind of ignored ever since he lost his XP gain talent at 10 and things have been getting thrown around. I think Dazzle's been ignored maybe a little bit more than he should. So hashtag Dazzle needs some love in the comment section down below because, you know, we don't like to see one of our boys getting ignored. It's not a good feeling. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. Appreciate it as always. Yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next one. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.